Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here recording as I was due in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm sure some of you wondering why I have these strange tetrads here on the floor. Well, let me tell you something old school style. Stephen Wool from 1983 Cellular Automata stuff. Basically, he postulated that you could take simple rules and create complex patterns out of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this set of rules, which if you imagine, um, I probably should have done this somehow, well, actually, so if you imagine, like, the top three of these um, are, like, filled in blocks, this rule would mean if you have three blocks above you that are filled in, the next one is going to be uh, not filled. This one says if the two on the left are filled in, but the other one isn't, it'll be not filled. Now, this one says if you have one on the left and one on the right above you, the next step will be filled in. Now, you guys are probably wondering, this is what is what is this for? Well, if you're trying to create a complicated model of something, you a lot of times will move from one state to the next to the next. And so if you imagine this upper row is one state, and then the uh, kind of resultant next state is here, you can actually kind of logically proceed down kind of a, a cascading uh, kind of graph of how things proceed. So this is going to seem a little bit strange. We're just going to go ahead and jump right in. This is based on Rule 60 from uh, Wolfram's simple cellular auto automata kind of rules. But basically, we've got a stairwell here that's a triangle. And if we look back, we can apply these rules to these stairs and have it look pretty awesome. So, let's see. So we've got one block here, and basically imagine that the one over here is empty and the one over here is empty. Well, based on those rules, that would be our third state there. So the one underneath it is going to be filled. So we'll leave this one filled. Now, over here, we have one block filled, two blocks empty. What does that look like? Well, that's that uh, fourth state there. This is the fifth, sixth, and seventh, uh, respectively. So we're going to move down to the next tier here. This one, we it has two on the right filled and one blank. That one is going to be two on the... Wait, did I not? I must have made that one. Wait, the middle and the right, but the left is empty. Okay. Yeah, so that's going to be that fifth state there. So this one is going to stay this color. But Oh, sorry. This one stays this color. But this one in the middle here has two on the left, like that. So this block is going to get replaced. Now, the way that Rule 60 works, every block in the first column here which would be the center line of a, uh, of a more symmetrical cellular automata. Every block in Rule 60 on this line is always going to be filled. Same thing for everything on this kind of 45 degree diagonal. But it's the middle blocks that you actually have to calculate out step by step. So, let's see here. So I know that I, these blocks are always going to be full. This block, we got one in the middle that's blank. That is going to stay filled. This one, one in the middle that's full. Where's one of them? Am I missing a state? Should have eight of them, shouldn't I? Yeah, I am missing a state. Dang it. I am missing the sixth state, actually. So that is going to be this one in particular in rule 60. Okay, so that one's going to apply there. I wish there was a better way to keep track of what ones I've done, but I know. Okay, so that covers these four blocks. Now, these ones all have a, uh, or this one has a full row above it. Full row above it is always blank. So we come in here, we hack this one up. This one's going to have the same thing. This one's got the two to the left above it, so it's blank. And it works like that. So the way that Rule 60 works, we kind of, just in general, are going to have a series of triangles that go like this. And... This one right here, just kind of trust me on this. If you looked at the, the way the rule is, that would work out like so. And then this one would also be blank. So, we're already kind of building a pattern here that right now doesn't look that great. But if you give it a few minutes, because part of that is the fact that it's on this angle like this. But once we actually get it together, I think from down there it should look pretty interesting. So... Anytime you have an alternating row in Rule 60, you're going to end up basically with a completely full row. 
And then anytime you have a completely full row, then you have like a nearly completely blank row after it like this. Whoops. So I'm just going to go ahead and place these like so. And I know that it's going to cut down this way. Whoops. And continue onto this row here. Whoops. Man, it is. I kind of wish I had thought to do this up front, but you know what? It's a little bit easier now. Now, I know that this one, because it's got these two on the upper left here. Well, where is it? Two on the upper left is empty. So, boom. I should just be calling these zeros and ones, basically, because that's, that's what they are. Um, and then I know for a fact that this one has the same thing going on. So, it goes like this. Who's the guy who can conquer death? That's Joe Hills. He plays for Nashville when he plays Minecraft. That's Joe Hills. That's Joe Hills. Well, we made it all the way down to the floor here, but I think that I'm going to kind of continue this. Now, I have Rule 60 in front of me on another screen, so I don't actually need to keep these markers up. They were just kind of for uh, ease of reading as I worked, but now that they're directly on the floor between me and my goal, I mean, that's going to have to be destroyed, thrown out, discarded. So we're just going to go ahead and toss all that. Now, unfortunately, I didn't bring the wall out. I didn't continue to bring this wall out, so that's going to be an issue. But if we just kind of mostly focus on triangles we have so far and continue in this line like it's gonna this one is gonna keep cutting in this way and it's eventually actually gonna point right into here which I think looks kind of neat so like just based on my knowledge of how this rule works I know that we're gonna have these ones are gonna be like the nice thing about these patterns is once you get the sense of them you can start filling them in really quickly so like I know that this is gonna be all these and this line here is going to be all of these and I know this is not like a traditionally neutral color like you would normally want in a gallery but I feel like this is supposed to be an extravagant space you know like this is not a uh, art gallery this is a private collection for people who don't necessarily have good taste so I can get away with being a little bit more flamboyant with my mathematical patternings yeah so this is just now a repeat of this line except down here And when this one ends, it'll kind of come to an end at the same uh, at the same kind of part of the floor that this main triangle here would end, which would be if I was just kind of working it out. Yep, that would be where that one would end. So that means that this one right here, this line, is going to be where all the triangles kind of wrap up. So we're just going to come across here, and we can preemptively fill this with spruce. All right, well, without doing the whole room's floor, but kind of like encapsulating this, it goes as far as the entrance. I think that we're going to end up doing something different with this part of the floor here, because I don't think that I want to cut into the wall enough to make it worth continuing this 45 degree angle out, because, I mean, that's a lot more digging. But, like, if you just kind of look at this from up here, whoops. So, you know, you come in through the door, it was invisible, you found the invisible door, you came in, you see the sign, and then as you're coming down these stairs, you kind of get this sense of like being drawn this way. I think that that's going to really pull the whole room together. So thank you, Stephen Wolfram, for your cellular automata and for your many, many rules. I think uh, this will be a good geometric way to carry the eye down here. I am open to suggestions for what I should do with the rest of the floor. If you guys think I should continue the pattern or which, once again, involves a ton of digging I'm not really sure I want to do. And I'm not sure that the room would look good, honestly, if I dug it out further. I think it actually kind of works well that there's a back wall here. But I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I'm thinking maybe I'll do just like a charcoal black floor for this area, or 
maybe even uh, a water floor. Because like Sea Cow Bay, the sign is supposed to be suspended above a bay. So having a, I might install a reflecting pool or a fountain. A reflecting pool might be better than a fountain because a reflecting pool would be, yeah. Okay, I think we're going to put a reflecting pool here, guys. But you know what? Go ahead and leave comments anyway because I am very curious to see what you think. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.